गुरु गोबिंद दो खड़े गुरु गोबिंद दो खड़े काके लागू पाए माई गॉड एंड माई गुरु बोथ आर स्टैंडिंग बिफोर मी हुज फीट शुड आई टच फर्स्ट गुरु गोबिंद दो खड़े काके लागू पाए बलिहारी गुरु आपने जिंदिए गोबिंद बताए हुज फीट टू जाय शुड आई टच फर्स्ट आई कमेंस by touching the feet of my father my guru not only in life but in my spiritual emotional and overall development whatever has been said about me is not really about me we needed to see this because this is a tribute to my father i am whatever i am today is only because of him <laughs> and somehow when i commence by speaking of my father words tend to desert me i am little emotional about it even though it's been a few years since he's passed away but his energy his vision his mission very much remains with us and it's not just me as his daughter it's not just his grandchildren i would like to quote from the first inaugural memorial lecture the apj satya memorial lecture that we held last year where lord paul gave the inaugural address and he said that being a committed advocate of education bhai ji was also concerned with two other areas of modern society the upholding of values and the governance of business intrinsically linked my brother believed that these three components education values and good governance to be the pillars of a strong democratic society and i wholeheartedly agree he went on to say bhai ji's character was so much in my mind that when i got the peerage we were allowed to hold a coat of arms on which you can mention the mottoes which which you want to live with and those that you have lived with and those were the thoughts that did come to his mind and but he does not just live in the hearts he lives beyond that in the hearts of minds of all those who came in contact with him of all those who came in touch with him his smile had a very special quality whenever and this i have heard from so many whenever one was down whenever one felt that you know one couldn't go on one did not even need to have spoken with him if he just sat in his presence one felt a renewed vigor and a renewed energy and the reason therefore that we remember him is beyond that of just remembering the man it's really about remembering the values the indomitable spirit the courage the determination the fearlessness that he exhibited throughout his life those values that we need not only to celebrate but to acknowledge that at the end of the day it is possible in this material world in this century to have achieved a lot with your life without having to sacrifice those values which constitute the core human values which we all hold dear and it is with this thought that we instituted this memorial lecture because dr satya paul never desired any monuments to himself i believe that the schools the colleges the university the institutions that he left behind and the people whose lives that he touched are living monuments to his memory and to his values but so what better way to really remember him than by celebrating those values he started life we many of us know this already 
but how can we have a memorial lectureship without reminding ourselves just very briefly about what that he was and what did he become. You know he came from a very humble beginnings. The family was in a very small business of making buckets. They were seven brothers and sisters. He was the eldest. They lost their mother when the youngest was born. And he lost his father very soon after he had just completed his education and was to get into work. So to his shoulders fell the responsibility also of bringing up those brothers and sisters. He went on to do his MA mathematics and was a gold medalist in combined Punjab. But we need to remember that much of his childhood was spent in studying by a lantern because the family could not afford electricity in those days. We need to remember that he completed his education by clambering up steps of one of the Arya Samaj schools that were there in Jalandhar in those times. There weren't very many good schools available at all. And when I say clambering, because he used to walk up with crutches, he had polio when he was a very young child. It was only much later in life when he could afford that he went to the US, to Boston. In fact, Lord Paul, Lord Suraj Paul was there studying at MIT at that time. And he could then afford the surgery that enabled him to walk with a walking stick and calibers and become much more mobile. So he completed his education while he was walking around with those crutches or with the help of that manual wheelchair that he needed to use. He fought in the freedom movement. He went to jail or in, with regard to having distributed seditious literature during the Quit India movement. And he tells, he used to tell me that that is when he lost all fear because they had taken away his crutches, he was thrown into a dark cell. Many days he was alone, later on of course he was with other prisoners also. And they used to sing together many songs related to the freedom movement which gave them a lot of energy and courage. But they didn't know, I mean, anything could have happened to him. Many of them were taken up for hanging or were sent to Kalapani, Nandaman. And he did eventually get released. But that is when he said he lost all fear. And he said, I lived my life completely fearless. Look at that focus, that determination, that indomitable spirit. He wanted, he was very, very passionate about education. He wanted to go and teach at a college, but he was refused on account of his handicap. But that didn't deter him. He decided to then get into business, build up the business. So in a way, the rest was history. The business got built up. The brothers, sisters, they're getting them married, getting them educated, getting them settled in life, was all done very, very lightly. It wasn't a burden for him. It was a source of joy for him. And that is the spirit that we gather here to celebrate. And I am delighted that after the inaugural address by his own brother, Lord Paul, we have with him, with us, Dr. Raminder Singh Ranger, if I may call you Ramiji, um, to deliver the second edition of the Memorial Lecture. Dr. Ranger has himself exhibited some of the values that we are talking about. There's a book that he has written, From Nothing to Everything, which embodies how he himself has arisen from very, very difficult circumstances. I'm not going to go into it because I'm sure he's going to share some of that with us today when he talks to all of us. And how he has come to where he is today. In fact, this, as some of you may know, we were to hold this lecture on the 14th. We had to prepone it because it's difficult for Dr. Ranger to have gone back. He's currently a trustee 
on the Mahatma Gandhi Foundation, which have collected the, and all the donations. He's personally contributed also, which is being installed in UK in the presence of our finance minister, Arun Jaitli ji, very shortly. He's somebody who has not just done wonderfully in terms of his achievements as a businessman, not only somebody who has been awarded by Her Majesty the Queen of England on seven occasions, six for business and one for his com contribution to community, but he's also somebody who is truly believes in giving back to society, to the nation, and to the world at large in terms of all that he has got from it. And I think when we look at it, this is what makes the difference between just being an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur who is a leader, an entrepreneur who's intrinsically involved with nation building. Nation building is an old traditional term because we look at it from point of view when we were looking at nations by themselves. Today, really, when we talk of nation building, I think we are talking about the global community at large. It may be useful to think of this world as a nation in itself. We still have maybe other worlds to discover. So when we really talk of nation building, we are talking about contribution to humankind, to mankind, and to development of your own country, yes, but also the world at large. I have always believed very strongly that each one of us, and this is the vision I believe that inspired our chairman also, when he first set up the first APJ school, the first APJ college, that every human being has the potential to be something great, to be somebody wonderful in their lives. They have a special contribution to make in this world. All that is required when they are small for the children to create the kind of environment that allows the best of this potential to flourish. And this is how the first APJ school was started. He started by first giving a school to the community to run, but very soon realized that if he really wanted a school to be able to embody what his dreams, what his vision was, then he needed to have been involved with the running of the school themselves. He wanted the schools not only to focus on human values, but to bring in the best of global learning, scientific temperament, combined with tolerance, diversity, and a focus above all on being good human beings. With this was not something that he thought of as the kind of legacy that we have today. He believed in taking the initiative. He believed in taking the risk and just moving ahead with it. I remember this school where we are sitting in today. When it was first set up, almost 35, 40 years ago, Mr. Sharma? 39 years ago, OK. 39 years ago, it started with tents. There was just empty barren land. I remember coming in to put in a foundation stone. And everybody was asking him, you know, who's going to come to school in tents? He said, what is important is what is being taught in the schools. What is important is the kind of teachers we are going to have in those schools, the leadership that we are going to have in the schools, and the environment that is created. And we were very fortunate to have so many parents come in, even at that time, to entrust their children to us. But what I wanted to say was that I could not visualize how he's just starting a school on a barren land. That is what entrepreneurship is about. He wasn't very clear how the money is going to get funded in, in the first APJ school that he set up in Jalandhar, by the way, because on those days, business used to be tight. They didn't have that kind of surpluses to funnel through. He wasn't sure 
whether he would be able to get the right kind of leadership, how the operations would happen. This is the first time that he's doing something like this. But he went ahead regardless. And people came along. They got attracted to the energy that he had, to the mission that he had. The reason I'm sharing this with you is that I believe this is what truly makes an entrepreneur. The ability to take risks in a balanced way, the ability to take initiatives, the ability to think out of the box, and to be able to put in all of your faculties, focus, and determination on achieving what you have set out to do. An entrepreneur does not necessarily need to have money making as his or her objective. In fact, a true entrepreneur is actually looking at the creation of wealth for all. And this is the commitment that we have dedicated ourselves to as my father's legacy going forward to take, have these values embodied not just within what we do, but all of us who constitute the larger APJ Satya and Swaran group. And all those activities, the approach, in whichever way we work and live our life and work at our businesses together. I would like to thank Dr. Raminder Singh Ranger for especially coming all the way from UK and being with us today. It makes it a very, very special for us, for him to be here and associated with this memorial lecture. I would also like to recognize so many eminent guests who are here with us today, but the list could go on. So may I refer to you as dear brothers and sisters, and thank you for being with us in this special celebration and commemoration. I'd just like to end with an Urdu couplet, which my father used to share with us many times. Rahe talab mein jazbaye kamil ho jiske saath. Rahe talab mein jazbaye kamil ho jiske saath. If your intensity of dedication, or rather if your intensity of desire is matched with your intensity of dedication. Rahe talab mein jazbaye kamil ho jiske saath. Khud dhoon leti hai manzil usse kabhi kabhi. If your intensity of desire is matched with your intensity of dedication, your desired goal itself seeks you out. Thank you.